Hello, my name is Michael Voigt, and this will be the first episode in a long series of episodes where I will discuss philosophical ideas and other questions that you may have. All right, so moving on, our topics today are going to be, is the life we know an illusion? Is our reality the only one? Could there be such thing as a collective unconscious? Uh, is there possibility for an infinite inception? <clears throat> is there only one God? Or are we all gods of our own paradigm and consciousness? So that's an interesting question. If the life we know is an illusion, it would be so far out of the human experience that it would be hard to tell just by looking at it the same way a fish doesn't know that it's in water because it has never had the experience of being out of it. It moves into more of um, is our reality the only one instead of is life an illusion because the water is not an illusion to the fish, and our consciousness is not an illusion to us. It's just something that's there that we have forgotten, misplaced in our minds. So the real question should have been, is our reality the only one? And I think this touches on mostly people who try to uh, establish it. A generic truth, namely historians, people of that nature who have this thirst for truth, when there really could be any number of multiple truths based on the person's personal perspective. And it continues from there up to the point where even the historians, what they cite, and just them telling you what they have found is an opinion because they have found it and you haven't. So you can't experience it. You have only to take their word for it, which would be an opinion. This kind of leads into the next topic, which really interests me. Um, thought about it a lot. Could there be such thing as a collective unconscious? It's an interesting question because... When you think of conscious or unconscious, you think of the brain, at least I do, and <clears throat> the unconscious part of the brain would be the part of the brain that is noticing things, but not focusing on them. And the conscious part of the brain would be the part of the brain that's focusing on them. So this question is <clears throat> really a unity question. Could there be such thing as a collective unconscious? Could the human race and plants and animals and basically every living thing, even some inanimate objects, it could be called into question, but we'll stick with just sentient beings right now. Um, could they all contribute with their unconscious mind to the overall reality as we know it, uh, the, the world around us? Is it only subject to our own opinion or do we all contribute uh, through our own experiences what the reality is as a whole so what i think is um, probably what most of you who are watching this would expect um, there's two sides the side that everything is connected which is the side that i find myself on and then there's the side that is Everything is based on your own personality and your own uh, perception of it, which a lot of uh, Eastern philosophers and people of that nature have <clears throat> thought of in the past, that everything is how you make it. And it's a great way to look at things, and it's definitely a good way to look at things when you're going through a hard time, but in my opinion, it's more likely that everything kind of contributes as a whole to everyone's conscious experience. 
this is kind of a fun question. Could there be such thing as an infinite inception? Um, it's let me first of all try and describe it. So, those of you who haven't seen the movie Inception, uh, it's basically like a dream within a dream. And when you get to a certain point, um, the dream becomes so indistinguishable from reality that you can do whatever you want and you're basically a god. Uh, you can create everything you want and think whatever you want and everything is pretty much there. But you can't really like leave it. So, and there is no such thing as time or space <coughs> in this dream world so imagine if you could go into a dream and create whatever you want and there'd be no limit for how long you would be there and like yeah you'd be asleep for maybe eight hours but if time is not an object then you could stretch it out so far that you have no idea what time is um in your own mind you could be there for forever so is it possible that when this could happen to a person that they would eventually make their own life i find this a really interesting question uh, basically what i think is that if you were able to do this what would happen eventually is that you'd create all these things and you like fulfill your dreams and you'd get to a point where your dreams aren't satisfying you anymore, so you need to add a little danger. Danger being anything from falling out of the sky or being chased by someone or something. Uh, but because you, it is your reality and you literally create it, um, chances are you're not going to kill yourself. <laughs> but So you'll basically overcome all of these obstacles you're putting in your way. And then it, it would get to an even more intense place where you push the boundaries of everything. So it's almost like, um, like it's not just like you can do whatever you want. It gets like weird, like just strange colors everywhere, basically like a psychedelic trip. And then finally, what I think is that you get to a point where the farthest thing you, it takes you full circle. The farthest thing from um, your real life is actually your real life. So you become a god, you fulfill your dreams, then you create danger, and then you create like a psychedelic trip. And then finally, it gets to um, you recreating your old life outside of the dream, inside the dream. Obviously without time. So is there only like a select few number of people and they're all still dreaming, and then we're just experiencing their dream one by one. Of course, then there's the other option, which is that all of us fell asleep, and it's actually still that one night, and we went through all of our dreams, and now we're here, and it's as if we were awake, but we're really not. Uh, Alright, this is the final topic for this video. Um, are we... Is there one God, like a monotheistic world view, or could everyone be a God? Or is it a polytheistic world, such as like Hinduism or the Greeks? An interesting question, because religion is often a very hot topic that's touched on by society, and it's definitely an important one because people base their entire set of morals off of their religion. So, I think that every possibility given in this question both has its ups and its downs, its positives and its negatives. For instance, if it's a monotheistic god, there's going to be um, sort of zealots in each of them, but especially in monotheistic cultures, there's going to be zealots because if there's only one ruling god, then there's going to be people who branch off and say that they're the only people who know the true word of God, which would make them God-like uh, and very close to God. As for uh, the polytheistic God theory, that would be such as the Greeks. 
there's a huge clash because now there's multiple people who are claiming that they know the word of one God, whereas in monotheistic it would be just one God, so there's only one ruling. In polytheistic, there's multiple rulings um, because you can't really put weight on a single God that's better than another one. So it creates a lot of controversy. And finally, the last theory would be that we're all gods. <clears throat> and this is one that I think uh, both applies to myself and is most applicable to science. That we are all gods. Uh, it's interesting because it sets an example for people to learn without boundaries it's one of those things that really dissolves boundaries which is probably the most important everything that does that is very very important so it dissolves boundaries because it makes it so that everyone is able to tell the truth as long as it's their own truth and it gives way to a sort of philosophy that you create the world around you and what you see is could be different than some, what else someone else sees and probably the most important part of this aspect is the fact that it gets rid of the idea especially in american and uh developed countries um first of all it gets rid of boundaries such as racism and uh overall hate and secondly it gets rid of boundaries such as law and order and what's right and what's wrong and gives everybody the opportunity to make their own set of morals based on what they believe and i think that's really important especially in today's society because um there's a huge amount of brutality on the part of largely developed countries against people everywhere especially like from ranging all the way from police brutality to uh, terrorism to invasion of other countries simply to exploit their natural resources so i think that by giving everyone their own set of morals in a democratic society uh, especially it gives way to a larger number of party systems and not just a two-party system like in the US it would give way to for everyone for their voice to be actually heard and not just summarized I think that's a really important fact all right so that's gonna conclude today's video I hope you enjoyed listening to me speak and I hope that it made you think a little bit more hopefully incited some self-reflection um, Please subscribe and like this video. Also check out my website, blog, and email me if you have any questions uh, or if you would like to be in the show. Also, you can contact me on Skype. My username is Karakin, K-A-R-A-K-K-E-N. Uh, I'll, I'll have that written down in the description as well if you'd like to discuss anything.